Hey, what's up guys? My name is Frank Malarsic and today we're going to be doing a brief stock analysis on Cisco stock, ticker symbol CSCO. So according to Cisco, they are the worldwide leader in networking for the internet and they provide the networking foundations for service providers, small and medium businesses, and enterprise customers. And this includes corporations, government agencies, utilities, and educational institutions. And their networking solutions connect people, computing devices, and networks, which allows people to access or transfer information with ease. So one of the first things that I like uh, to see about Cisco is that I just think they have a great investor relations page, probably one of the best um, I've seen. So if we scroll through here, they just have some news listed. Uh, you know, they have some stuff about their full year reports and all that. But then down here at the bottom, uh, I think this part is really interesting. You can sign up to receive email alerts about, you know, press releases, 10K reports, uh, proxy materials, insider transactions, which I think that one uh, sound would be really interesting to have, um, and just some other things. So I think that is pretty cool. I don't think I've seen that on uh, other websites. Maybe they do have them on other websites, but I have not seen them. And then another thing I like um, is that they just have a ton of uh, extra financial data uh, available and you can just download it in an Excel format basically and uh, just sort of look at uh, what's going on with all their finances and it's just super easy to find and super easy to use so I actually downloaded a bunch of these and we're just gonna look through uh, you know like what uh, they have shown here so this one is just showing the margins uh, by segment in you know uh, their different uh, geographic segments you know so they list their Q1 uh, 2021 margins by the different segments there and the percentages um, and then they have you know these uh, unallocated corporate items that are you know expenses across all segments that aren't really attributable to just one segment uh, so they're including those or subtracting those out that is um, and then they just kind of talk about that a little bit um, and then this next one here is just revenue by a geographic segment and by you know whether it's in products or services so for example, in their America segment in Q1 fiscal year 2021, they had about $5 billion in revenue uh, for products and about $2 billion in revenue for services. And that was actually down about 10% year over year. Um, and they go on to show you know all these other things. And Q2 uh, 2021 fiscal year is actually uh, like Q4 of 2020. So their fiscal year runs from the end of July to the end of July. So the fiscal year of 2021 actually started um, basically at the end of July of 2020. So this Q2 of 2021 runs from around October or the end of October of 2020 to the end of January of 2021. So this is Q2 is the most recent quarter, um, if that makes sense. So across uh, Q2, basically they were just about even with uh, the prior year, which is good to see, um, but they were uh, down, including Q1, they were down for the year to date totals a little bit, about 5%. So hopefully we can see some rebounding there in the next few quarters for sure. Um, and looking by revenue by product category, uh, basically, we can see this broken down a little bit more. Um, they have these infrastructure platforms, applications, security, and then other products. Um, and you can see uh, most of these products were down a little bit. These other products, uh, are a little bit more vague, I guess. Uh, they have descriptions other places on the website, but those are actually down 56% in Q1 and 39% in Q2. So that's not great to see, but uh, we can see overall, again, their total revenue, like I said, was down a little bit uh, for the beginning of the year or the first half of this fiscal year. Uh, and then they have one on statements of cash flows talking about you know, fiscal year 2020 um, for the first quarter and then for the second quarter and then the total six months. And then, sorry, these are fiscal year 2021. I think I misspoke there. And then fiscal year 2020, you know, just compare them, comparing them. Uh, so basically, we had some nice cash flow uh, growth from October of 2020 down here to October of 2021. Um, and we had uh, a fair bit of drop off there in the second quarter, uh, you know, from October to January. Um, and then they were closer to even there from uh, six months ended in January of 2021 versus 2020. Um, and they have some other financial data here, um, just about uh, some more detailed things about the balance sheet, talking about inventories um, and specific numbers there. So we're not really gonna go through all this, but I just think it's cool that they have all that data you know, readily available and then they have this balance sheet. And um, they have 
like some of this stuff other places like you look at the balance sheet in the 10ks and 10qs but it's nice to have it you know in this excel format uh, so that you can maybe do some analysis on some of this data or crunch some numbers on certain things if you want to um, so you can see their total current assets um, as of right now is around 44 billion dollars and uh, down here total current liabilities is around 27 billion so super healthy um, current ratio there and then their total assets of around 95 billion compared to the total liabilities of around 56 so they really don't have too much long-term debt about 10 billion there so that's uh, not too concerning at all and um, it's looking pretty good as uh, the balance sheet goes I think for Cisco and then also just taking a look at the uh, basically results from the second quarter of 2021 which like I said ended at the end of January uh, they say total product order growth was 1% year over year and product revenue strength across the catalyst 9000 data center switching security wireless and WebEx portfolios um, and then they said they had great progress on business transformation to more software and subscription with 76% of software revenue sold as a subscription so obviously uh, that software as a service you know subscription type model is sort of the holy grail um, in tech companies these days so it's good that they are uh, you know moving towards that even more and getting a big chunk of their software revenue um, from that sort of method I guess and then they also increase the dividend at 3% which we'll look at a little bit more um, and then just basic, basic results 12 billion dollars in revenue which as we looked was pretty much flat year over year and earnings per share um, was around 60 cents uh, with those generally accepted accounting principles and 79 cents without those um, so that EPS decreased 12% year over year on a gap perspective and uh, had about a 3% increase year over year on a non-gap perspective and then just looking at a little bit of guidance for Q3 they're um, expecting around three and a half to five and a half percent revenue growth year over year and they're expecting EPS of around 64 to 69 cents on a gap basis and 80 to 82 cents on a non-gap basis and another thing I like about the investor relations page they have you know a stock quote page which uh, most companies do uh, but they also have this nice little calculator at the bottom which I haven't really seen at many other companies so like for example if we just look at the past eight years um, comparing it to the S&P 500 and reinvesting dividends uh, we get this little calculation and you know this green is uh, Cisco and then this blue line is the S&P 500 and we can see down here that it says the compound annual growth rate over those eight years is about 16 percent for Cisco and about 13% for the S&P so uh, that's pretty cool to see and uh, I just think that's another great thing about their investor relations page obviously it's not you know affecting their business and making them a better business but it's just something uh, that I appreciate and as always just taking a quick look at the dividends you can see this uh, last announced dividend is 39 cents per share which was a little bit of an increase about 3% giving us an annual payout of $1.48 and this is a 2.85% yield at the moment which is pretty good for a technology company you know most tech companies uh, if they do pay dividends they're pretty small um, but you know um, close to a 3% yield and the good thing there is the payout ratio is pretty low even below 50% about 46% and um, like we like to see they have a five-year dividend growth rate around 10% uh, unfortunately they only had a small you know 3% increase this year um, but I'm really hoping that they are able to increase that a lot more uh, in 2022 as they get back on track and get fully back into the swing of things as the coronavirus uh, you know completely goes away and they have do have a dividend growth of nine years uh, nine consecutive years of growing that dividend so uh, nothing great there but I think they're well on their way to uh, being consistent and uh, really proving that consistency and then just looking at the uh, PE ratio is maybe just a quick method of evaluation you can see right now uh, the PE ratio is around 22 um, which compared to the overall technology sector like we're going to look at in a second is a uh, pretty pretty good uh, you can see this weird spike here kind of makes it hard to look at so if we go back in time here you can see most of the time their PE was definitely below that 20 mark you know uh, floating most of the time around you know 15 10 to 15 uh, so 20 21 22 is definitely higher uh, than is probably normal for them or they've historically traded at um, but you know it's not that big of a deal and uh, I would say most people would think that the technology sector is probably a little bit overvalued as a whole so I would say Cisco is probably on the lower end of that as we can look here uh, the tech sector average PE is around 39 um, and then I'm not exactly sure what industry Cisco would fit into they do have a lot of hardware with which uh, that industry has an average of 34 um, but they do have a little bit of software I would say uh, you know stuff like Webex and the like so 
Um, I'm not exactly sure where they fall if they fit in directly into one of these industries, uh, but you can definitely see that their PE ratio is significantly lower um, than at least the average in the tech sector. And just looking at my Cisco position real quick, you can see I have about 1.48 shares here, um, and those shares are worth about $77, which is about 5.5% of my portfolio. Uh, so nothing too crazy there, but a solid amount um, in my portfolio. And uh, I have a pretty nice average cost on that, around $40 per share, and they're trading around 52 now. So my yield on cost is actually 3.72%, which is uh, uh, pretty nice, I would have to say. And then the dividend I'm gonna receive from them annually is around $2.19, so that's probably around $55, or sorry, 55 cents a quarter. $55 a quarter would be fantastic. Um, hopefully I can get there someday, but uh, 55 cents a quarter around that, and um, I believe if we scroll over here, they should be paying sometime soon. I think it's maybe, uh, yeah, the 28th. So I think that will be this Wednesday. So I think Cisco is at a pretty decent valuation right now, probably around fair value, but I'm personally not gonna be adding to my position just because I'm happy with the size of my position and the average cost of my position at the moment. Um, and if we see some sort of drop in the market or in Cisco stock, I would definitely consider uh, picking up some more shares, but uh, I will not be doing that at this time. So if you guys are interested in checking out another video I made on an information technology stock, I made one on Apple. So I'll leave a link up here if you guys wanna see that and a link in the description below. And I just want to thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.